Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Bible class. Let's start off with our pledges. To your right hand over your heart, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Okay, boys and girls, let's go over your Bible verse. We are on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. If you don't know it, please grab your Bible or your paper and read it with me, please. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will be bringing with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore encourage one, an one another with these words. Make sure that you're practicing that Bible verse. Boys and girls, let's pray and we will get started with our lesson. Bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for waking us up and giving us a new opportunity to learn about you and your word. Lord, we ask that you watch over us today, that you not only keep us healthy and safe, that you not only watch over those who are sick and suffering, but you be with us today. Be near us. Help us to know that you are close and that we can come to you with anything, with our fears, with our anxieties. Lord, we ask that you um, be close to us to help us to get through this time, this time of uncertainty. We know that we cannot be together in one room as a class, but we know that we are all together in spirit. We know that we will one day be all together with you in heaven. Lord, bless our day. Help us to be encouraging to one another and help us to stay, um, stay connected with each other, Lord. We know that even though that is difficult, we can still um, be connected. We can still try hard to love each other, to show kindness and compassion to those around us. Lord, we pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Boys and girls, get ready for our new Bible story. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he told the disciples to go into the world and preach the gospel, to go to places like Judea and Samaria and to the outermost parts of the earth. Well, in Jerusalem, there was now a huge assembly of believers, but they had not yet moved out to the surrounding areas of Judea and Samaria to give the gospel. Therefore, God allowed a big problem to come. Persecution. Persecution is making people suffer because of what they believe. And as persecution came, many of the believers were forced to move out of the city of Jerusalem. In spite of the awesome miracles that the apostles worked from day to day, the religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They called for the apostles to come before them and demanded, By what power or by what name are you doing these things? So Peter says, by the name of Jesus Christ, and this made the Jewish rulers furious. Peter was teaching that there was life after death. He was teaching a doctrine which most of them strongly denied. Their anger increased. They were furious. We must do something at once to stop this new teaching, the religious rulers said. 
If we don't, all the people in Jerusalem will become followers of these men. So twice the religious leaders seized the apostles and locked them in prison. The second time they locked them up, the, the furious leaders decided to kill the apostles. Well, there was a member of the council that stood up. His name was Gamaliel. He was a Pharisee who was recognized as the greatest teacher of his day, as the most big-hearted of all those Jewish rabbis. When Gamaliel saw that the religious rulers were determined to kill the apostles, he stood up. He advised them, if you, if this new teaching is man-made, not man-made from God, then it won't amount to anything. But if it is really, truly God, you can't overthrow it anyway. You'd be fighting against God. Well, because the Jewish leaders honored Gamaliel as a wise teacher of the law, they decided to let the apostles live. But they were still angry. The Jewish rulers beat the apostles cruelly, and then they finally allowed them to go. Even though they were beaten, the apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for Jesus' sake. They continued preaching about Jesus, and persecution likewise continued, and even increased. Terrible as this persecution was, God used it to cause believers to go into Judea and Samaria, and as they count, continued to preach about Jesus. In the midst of all this persecution, the number of believers kept increasing in the city of Jerusalem. And as God changed the hearts of those who came to Christ, he gave them compassion for the poor believers of Jerusalem, especially the widows and orphans who had no one else to care for them. Therefore, the believers gave money and food to the apostles, and the apostles gave widows and orphans what they needed. This distribution of food to the poor soon kept the apostles so busy that they hardly had time to pray or preach. When some of the Greek widows began to complain that the Hebrew widows were getting more food than they were and that they were being neglected by the apostles, the apostles called a meeting and said to the believers, It is not wise for us to spend all of our time taking care of the needy. We must have time to pray often and to preach the gospel. Select from among you seven wise, honest men who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And let them do this work of distributing food to the poor. Then we apostles will have time to study, pray, and to preach God's word. The believers liked this idea, so they chose seven faithful men to look after the poor. The, the seven deacons, as they were called, were brought to the apostles who laid their hands on them and prayed God's blessing on their work of the, assisting the widows, the orphans, and the poor.